Hey, hey, y'all, listen. Tell Diddy to stop. My myself acting a fool today, y'all. I hope everything's gonna work out well and we're gonna get through this show. I feel like Diddy's hacking my computer. My computer acting a fool right now. But hey, y'all, happy Tuesday. Yes, today is dedicated to Diddy, the dark side. You are gonna talk about Diddy. I'm glad y'all in the building. Don't forget to hit the like button. I'm gonna see if I can get through this because it seems like Diddy cut, he, he chapping in the people's internet. He messing around. Got all my stuff pulled up. I don't know what's going on over here. It's acting crazy. Are y'all hearing me okay? Y'all seeing me okay? Diddy not today. Because we got to talk about it. You did it. We're going to talk about it. Say no our fault. Oh, thank you. Appreciate that. So we're going to talk about Diddy the dark side. They raided his homes. He just so happened to be going on spring break with his twins. And that's why him and the twins wasn't in the home when it got raided. Now, if you ever seen Diddy's Instagram and he when he would go on vacation, everybody would be there, including Baby Love, her mama, Young Miami, uh, the sons, their, their girlfriends. But it just so happened this spring break, he goes solo with the twins. I'm not quite buying it, but if that's what they want to put out there, okay. They say he had no clue this raid was coming. Okay. His lawyer came out and said this whole thing was a witch hunt. And they destroyed his house. Looking for nothing and finding nothing. I will tell you this. Judge Mathis said it was excessive. And hear me out, people, because sometimes y'all hear what y'all want to hear. And y'all be like, Dave, I did I did No, hear me out. Diddy is sinister. He's messy. He got to pay for his deeds that he has done. But they did. They tore that house up. But not only that, I do think they were excessive because you know what? Uh, 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 Judge Mathis reminded us. When they went to Epstein's house, it wasn't all this drama. When they went to Weinstein, you didn't see his wife sitting on the lawn in her dress while they searched the home. Even when they went to R. Kelly's property. They didn't do all of that. They did a whole performative show when they went to Diddy's house and had Justin and, and, and King Combs in handcuffs. Now, I'm going to buckle my own seatbelt up because I know a lot of people are not going to agree with me, but my heart is breaking, breaking for the kids. Diddy left them there for dead. They traumatized right now. Hopefully they doing some online therapy with a therapist. Christian Combs' his mom is no longer on this earth. Kim Porter is Christian's mom. So all he got left is his daddy. He got Diddy. And where's Mama Combs at? Where's Janice Combs at? Because you, know you know what's funny? We always say, when we see these other people, we be like, where's the mother? Where's the parents? How could they let them? Where's Janice Combs? I want to speak to her. I want to speak to Diddy's mother. What did Diddy see growing up that this is him now? If somebody got Janice's number, y'all sent her a text message? Y'all call her up and y'all tell her Diva want to talk to her? Tell the diva one talk to her. Where's Janice Combs at? Because Diddy is a mess. Then talk about the raid, the excessive force, the kids. And then there's this Ava.
with Ava, who's Ava, and where's Ava's parents? I'm sick of these parents selling their kids to the devil for a nickel dollar dime. Where's Ava? What happened to Ava? Something about that don't seem right, feel right, smell right. Then he adopted this girl called Ava. She done met the twins when she was little and Ava's parents allowed Diddy to be like a parent. It's a mess. By the time we finish hearing about everything Diddy did, I'm going to crawl up under the table. This is this is a, a Lifetime movie, a Netflix three-day special. Who did that Where's Wendy Williams documentary? We need them to get the cameras out and get ready because they got to do a whole Diddy documentary. Find Ava. Let's talk to this guy they arrested. They call them the drug mule. Speak to little Rodney. Just like they did that, uh, 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 what, 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 what's that thing? What is that thing? Get, get my hair going to turn black. Girl, you know, what, what, what's that, uh, when they did the R. Kelly documentary and all them people was in the documentary talking about what R. Kelly did to them? They're going to have to do a 10-part series to speak to all the people that did it on their dirty. I could have made a video every hour about the Diddy stories. So many people were happy that they raided Diddy's home. Who has that many enemies? It was coming out left and right, right and left. Even Cassie. Lawyer said, that's right, go get him. Good God, yes, Surviving P. Diddy. The 12-part series. And each part is going to be about two hours long. Yeah, I know Ava made her Instagram private because she don't want the people asking her, did Diddy touch her? She called him Papa Diddy, Papa Combs. Whew. You know, the Rays feel like they turned uh, Diddy from a villain to a victim. <laughs> Listen, they might have they might have went overboard, but it'll be a long time before Diddy could be considered a victim. This man got whew. I mean, you know they had it. What's the whiz? It says follow the yellow brick road. Follow the blood stains and you'll find Diddy. This man, he's too much. He's too much. You know, what's that? Let me remind myself here. Let me see. Let me see here. You know, they, what, what's that uh, uh, Bible saying? To, to, for, to, um, too much is given, much is required. And the other one, Matthew 16, 26. For what is a man profited? If he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Yo, yo, did he? He gave everything. Dumb, dumb, did he? Come on, Juanita. Dumb, dumb, did he? You have a man that had all these talents that had the mindset to build a whole music industry he started out as a dancer he used to dance in the videos and he worked his way up bought his way whatever he did he built a whole empire And for what? How big are jail cells? 
You are on probably that home looked like it was what thirty thousand. I don't know. I, that home was humongous, and you traded all of that to be in a box. Now, I said this yesterday, but y'all know how y'all like to beat me upside the head, and I'll be like, whatever, I take it. But I said it yesterday, there were no arrest warrants. How could he be on the run? I said it would be on the news if this man was on the run, if they had an arrest warrant and they was looking for him. There's none yet. I also said yesterday that they was looking more to see what they can destroy versus what they really can get. I said yesterday that so many people are involved in this thing here. They going to get Diddy. Come on now, Dr. Love. I said what I said. They, they, they got to figure out how to get Diddy without taking down the people that they don't want to take down. And how do they do that when there's so many? It's a ton. Little Ronnie told us. He said, Diddy got connections high, low, low, high. He said, politicians, royals, this, that. You name it, Diddy is connected. So how do we take him down and make sure the ones we don't want don't go down with him. That's part of his arrogance, though. Part of his arrogance is he knows. He knows. If he goes down, there's a whole lot of other people that can go down with him. And they're saying there's so, yeah, Diddy's a small fish. You know, and they're, they're saying that uh, there's some others that are more sinister than Diddy. Well, they, who, who, who could get worse than that? Come on. The, 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 just everybody. The royals, politicians connected from the U.S., U.K., and France. Child, listen. It's a lot. It's a lot. But you know what? I'm going to bring the people on in the building because we got so much to talk about. We got to talk about some things. Let me see what I'm going to do here as I bring these people in the building. We got to talk about some things. You know, they said your words, your own words sometimes can really uh, uh, take you down, right? They said your own words sometimes could take you down. Because Diddy, uh, bad boy entertainment. And hasn't he been like the bad boy? Really? He's a bad boy is an understatement. You know, there's this saying talking about it's all in the name. A saying that goes, it's all in the name. And when I say Diddy is a whole hot flaming mess, yes, he is. Clyde Davis, listen. You know what, though, what, what has to be understood by many is that there are some people that can get away with things and there are some people that can't. And even when you think you're getting away with something, what you need to understand is that you're not dumb. And at the end of the day, if somebody got to get blamed, you're going to get blamed over them. I promise you that. I promise you that you will get blamed. So you better be careful. You better watch yourself and you better do what you got to do and always try to do the right thing. Because listen, I tell you what, you ain't never going to get me all cleaned up. Not going to happen. Y'all know what I need, right? Because I got to bring the people on in the building. What I need it? Come on now, Tay Tay. I love you and appreciate you for that. I need a what? I need a choo choo. 
All aboard, everybody. It is Tuesday night and it's trending topics and it's Diddy and it is the dark side. We're talking about the kids, the raid, the sets of force. Where's Eva? 50 Cent clowning him. And he sold his shares to Revolt TV. Now, you know, there's all kinds of theories. He's broke. He needs the money. He's on the run, so forth and so on. One thing I hope for sure. See, the minute Cassie would have sued me, I'm telling you what I would have did. I would have put everything in the kids' names. And when I say everything, I mean everything. Everything I own would he got enough kids. And that Christian, listen, I believe all his kids love him. But that Christian Combs, King Combs, who looks like his twin, he loves his daddy. He could have put everything in Christian's name and Christian would have made sure it did, if daddy had to go behind bars and when he got out, he would have made sure his daddy was going to be good. He would have. That's just my opinion on that thing. Let me go ahead and bring the people in the building so we could talk. Hold on one second. Let me see here. Hey, Leo. Hey, Diva. Choo, choo, choo. Choo, choo, choo. Hey, in my opinion. Hey, Felicia. Hey, hey. Choo, hey, choo. Choo. Well, today hey. I'm not going to say choo, choo. I'm going to say clinkity clink. The bar is sold. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my goodness. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and you that part right there. Whoa, whoa, Don't whoa, whoa. drop the soap. Listen. We're going well, to he do... likes it like that anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. Oh, my God. Allegedly. Oh, my. Sebastian. <laughs> Listen, we're going to get right up to this. And we're going to start out with, um, you know, well, what part we'll start out? We'll start out with the, the lawyer. You hmm. know, uh, uh, Felicia always tells us your lawyer matters. Uh-huh. The lawyer matters because your lawyer will determine whether or not you're going to do some time. Or maybe stay free. And there's some lawyers that are in Diddy's life that has been in his life for a minute. He had he had his lawyers for a, a minute now. He didn't play around with this whole lawyer thing, okay? So let me bring this out. And they said, you know, it was a whole witch hunt going to his house. They call it foul play. Let me see. Let's go here. So Diddy Lawyer slams investigations as a witch hunt. Said the feds use excessive show of force and ambush. Sean Diddy Combs is not going down without a fight. After Homeland Security raided the mobile's mega mansions in Los Angeles and Miami, his attorney, Aaron Dyer, released a statement to page six, calling it a witch hunt. Yesterday, there was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants was executed at Mr. Holmes' residence. There's no excuse for the excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities on the way his children and employees were treated. The lawyer said Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with authorities. Despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has the ability to travel been restricted in any way. Sources told Page Six that Combs and his team did not see it coming, as that he was preparing to vacation in the Bahamas with his children for spring break. Let me just pause this. There go, Diddy. The media knew beforehand, as there as there were already helicopters there. One source said the unprecedented ambush paired with an advanced coordinated media presence leads to premature rush to judgment of Mr. Combs and is nothing more than a witch hunt based on meritless accusations made in civil lawsuits, his lawyer claimed. A source close to the situation described the scene as including lasers pointed on his son's heads, faces, and hearts. That's a lot. While they were handcuffed and escorted out, the source further claimed that Combs' sons was not fully dressed and painted a scene of terror in which assault rifles were drawn. Cone's properties in California and Florida also took a major hit with our insider telling us that there was significant property damage to both estates. Cone's protege, 
Brandon 425, who has been described in court documents at Bad Boys Records, found the alleged drug mill, was arrested for personal use of Coco and, and, and Mary Jane, according to our source. But the idea that he's a drug mill is ridiculous. He was only arrested and then he was he has already been released. His arrest has nothing to do with any more other than Brandon on the source claim. The investigation comes on the heels of several lawsuits from both men and women accusing Combs of S-A-N-R, among other allegations, which has been denied. Combs' lawyer insists that the music robo is innocent and said this has been no final and criminal or civil liability with any of these allegations. Mr. Combs is innocent and will continue to fight every single day to clear his name. Combs was planning to head to the Bahamas to spend time with his 17-year-old twin daughters, Jesse and Delilah, when Homeland Security raided two of his mansions on Monday, a source familiar with the situation previously told page six. That was him pacing at the airport. Okay. Diddy was detained at the airport and while headed to the Bahamas with the twins, the source said. Flight Daniels showed his private jet had landed in the Caribbean near Antigua on Monday morning. A video of Diddy pacing around an executive airport in Miami surfaced hours later, confirming he was in Florida at the time. Authorities, authorities previously confirmed to the Post that on March 25th, Homeland Security Investigations, New York um, executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HSI Los Angeles, HSI Miami, and our local law enforcement. Enforcement partners, we will provide further information as it becomes available. Now, okay, let me finish this. New York's Southern District um, Federal Court, which issued the warrant, is where Diddy's ex girlfriend, Cassandra Victoria, better known as RB Sanger Cassie, filed a lawsuit against the mobile alleging years of SA and ST. He denied the allegations and settled it in 24 hours, but um, several other accusers subsequently came forward with similar allegations after Victoria filed her suit in November, and Diddy had also denied any wrongdoing. So let me just say this here this is Diva talking. I ain't the end all be all, but let me say this here. So he didn't know they was coming. He's at the airport. They speak to him at the airport, Homeland Security. They take your phone. You don't know that they at your house or houses and that your children are there and you continue to get on this plane and go to wherever you go on to vacation with your daughters. You don't go back and see about the kids, your staff and everybody else. Somebody make that make sense for me. If I'm about to get on my private jet with my sister and them, and the feds come up on me, give me your phones, give me your iPad, give me all your electronics. And I give it all up. What's going? What, what, what's going on? I got the right to know. We got a warrant this season, and we got a warrant to be up in your house, and they at your house now. You don't try to call your kids. You don't try to go back or send somebody back or do something to go see about the kids you made. What kind of daddy is that? Now, as I go around, I'm going to pull up the other one so we can see how they ransacked the house. But I will be honest with you. I haven't seen too many homes that they raided. And, and when they was looking through the drawers, they just opened up nicely and they just picked stuff out. And then they put it back when they didn't find what they want. They, that ain't what they do. They just a tossing and a throwing and a looking and the duck. And then somebody be in another room, and when they find out that they found, I got something. And then everybody come in that room. What you got? Okay, here, here go the plastic bag. Let's label this. Leo, what's your thoughts on this? And the Girl, it took me a, it, it it took me a whole twenty four hours to process this. So it's different things 
I'll need Felicia to help me connect it. But for one, I feel like when he was at the airport and they confiscated his phones with the twins, I feel like, okay, he knew it was going down, but it was no rush to get back to the property, not to protect his kids, but he already knew he didn't already removed everything that they could have possibly had that could incriminate him after the Cassie case. That's what I'm thinking. He didn't show his hand by rushing back. And in number two, I feel like when it comes to his children that were there, the boys are grown. Like they're almost to 30. So I'm quite sure he probably did get a communication with them eventually, but he had the youngest girls with him at the time. So he need to keep continuity with them to make sure, okay, let them know it's not really that serious. It's serious, but it ain't really that serious. We're going to go ahead on and continue our trip, even though the feds and showed up and say, give up all your communications. I also feel like when it comes to how they rated the property, I can concur with okay, Weinstein and Jeffrey Epstein was not treated like that. But we got to remember, P. Diddy don't look like Jeffrey Weinstein, uh, uh, Jeffrey Epstein or, or Weinstein. He don't look like them. So they're going to conduct that raid the way they conduct the raid on our people. And I have seen the aftermath of a raid personally with my own eyes. And I didn't see the cushion split and all the stuffing out. And all the hinges taken off, the the cabinets and the um the the table legs taken off, the chair legs taken off, potted plants dumped, the garden dug up. I didn't see any of that. That's how they do us in the hood. So it wasn't at the extreme of how they do it in the hood. I mean, mattresses cut up, everything you can imagine that can be split open. You know, they, they break the pictures and take out the bag. I mean, glass everywhere, stuff everywhere, food everywhere, sugar bags, you know, sliced down the middle, flour bags sliced down the middle, and it's just all a whole mess. So his really, from what I know of, is not as bad. But it may not be on uh, um, being careful like they may have did with Je uh, Jeffrey Epstein or Harvey Weinstein. It might not be. They didn't treat him like that, but they treated him in the middle. Okay. As far as the charges are concerned, it, 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 there are no charges. He is not. Um, there is no warrant out for his arrest. He is free to travel. Of course, he's going to lead them boys in the wind, but somewhere in between, they got the message and they packed up their they stuff and they left the house. But it's too late now. I really do believe, because once you are at a certain level and it's cert as soon as it moves to a certain level, the people he may have had in the inside did not tell him that it was coming. He probably knew it was coming, but he did not know it was intimate like it within some hours he probably did not know that and i am at the place of that did he get ready to take the fall for the others there are other people that are high up in this ring he may have profited financially in a way that the higher ups did not but he getting ready to take the fall and he going to need some good lawyers. And I'm not saying they ain't going to be able to get them off, but he going to really need some good lawyers because it's basically over for Diddy because there's so many people that's higher up unless he starts singing. Now, he might start singing. I don't know him as the one that's going to go down for everybody else. I don't really see him like that. I see him as a very selfish person. So he may start talking. And boy, the streets gonna be hot when he do diva. I will say this: he ain't built for nobody's jail. That's right. There's, there's some people that could deal. Uh, he not that type of gangster. He a corporate gangster. Um, 
I'm coming to you, in my opinion. Give me one second. Not baby love room. But they ain't split the teddy bear though. <laughs> when I seen that, yeah. all the stuff animals was split. Uh huh. Shoes for days. That's the key of shoes. <laughs> bad but it's not really that bad like the guts of everything will be hanging out like everything drawers completely torn apart like it will be everything will be good Your five thousand dollar coats, they be split up. Like everything will be sliced and diced. Mm -hmm. It's bad for him because he ain't never experienced anything like that. Oh my gosh, you guys! I just got this new workout set from Zentoa. From Sonata, thank you so much. Look how oh, cute! It's like job. seamless, so you don't get the camel toe. Get my butt. Aren't these great? Okay. All right, in my opinion, you're up. Um, I, <laughs> don't do the don't do the crime if you don't want to do the time. I can't I see him as a I can't see him as a victim because he got too many victims. So I can't feel sorry for you when you mm -hmm. do stuff that you don't follow the rule of the law. Then this is the things that happen to you. Be a law abiding a citizen. Don't make somebody else's child a victim. And as far as him leaving his children, I think it's disgusting. He didn't give a dang about those children. Mm -hmm. Whether they grown or not, I'm not leaving my babies to fend for themselves when they got mm -hmm. armed officers drawing up on them. I'm just not doing that. Those are your babies. Thank you, in my opinion. Felicia, you're up. Hey, good evening, everyone. You know, I, I'm I don't I don't have the general point of view, and um, I keep hoping that I can find myself more mainstream, but I cannot. I'm looking at this video footage. I don't even know who took who took that footage, uh, Diva. I don't know. I feel like it had to be someone in his camp, right? I'm thinking that. It's so they send it to, T to TMZ. So what? So yeah. We feel, so we can feel sorry. I don't feel sorry. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. I don't give a damn. I, you know what? Let me tell you something. What I saw was a whole bunch of stuff. Hey, Savannah. I saw a whole bunch of stuff. You know, we talking about the boys, the kids. These are men. These are men. I am nowhere near the inner circle of Mr. Combs. I don't know him. I don't know his mama that he smacked up. I don't know all the people that he hired to perform at his parties. I don't know all the people, anybody who he has abused, essayed, demeaned, disrespected. I don't know how many people are out here addicted to what he was given, what he was doing, who need help, who have been hurt, who have been harmed. 
So I see some of your stuff turned upside down. I saw some people in your house out there on, on, on the lawn, uh, handcuffed, not handcuffed, pow, pow to the head. I knew you, this man was in trouble. You know, we have people, oh, so-and-so predicted it three months ago. Anybody following this suit right before Thanksgiving, we saw it coming. We just didn't really believe the power of social media because this wasn't the mainstream story that was running. This was social media coming up and talking about the transgressions and the continuous harms and loss of life at the hands of Mr. Combs and his team. So I don't care. I don't care about your stuff. I don't care about your, your, your multiple pairs of footwear, your coat, your jacket. I don't care what happened. If you didn't know not to be there, now you know. Don't be there. If you didn't know something was coming and this your father, this your brother, this your uncle, this your son, that's on you. I would know not to be there even if I worked there. I could be on the cleaning staff. Guess where I'm at? I quit. <laughs> I ain't coming up in this piece. Because <laughs> I'm not going down for what you've done, what you've been doing. And look how he treated the people that some of you believe he allegedly loves. I don't care if he didn't have a phone anymore. You knew when they came for you with that warrant to take your personal items that they were at your home. Maybe you didn't know a half hour before. Maybe you didn't know an hour before. Maybe you didn't know the day before. But you definitely knew then. And you didn't go to check on anybody. Because you're a punk. And you're afraid. And you're an addict. And you need your dope. And you need that more important, more necessary than the family, your children, and the people who still may be the one or two who care about you. So no, I don't care. And I'm glad, and to God the glory, they're going to get that man off the streets. He's going to end what he's doing. And maybe he'll go in and get some medical help. He's got some serious substance addictions. He's not going to be able to do an hour or two hours or a half day in a jail cell. He's just not. So anybody looking for justice in the jail system is not going to happen if you don't get cleaned up. So no. I don't want to hear about the kids. No. They were going on spring break. Well, uh, anybody who has their kids with a known uh, user, abuser, been charged. I mean, what is this? The seventh, eighth lawsuit? If someone says they've been harmed, they've been robbed, they've been stolen from. You have your children in his company. Probably the only two that he could get to go with him. The rest said, we ain't going. We're going to stay home. Now, if I'm if I'm correct, you said that they found substances in the house. Is that correct? I never, I don't. Mm. I heard that they found something. I don't know what it is. that they. Yeah, found. they said it on the video. Yeah, that they found that in the house. So They found it in the airport with him. His drug mule had it. Yeah, I was going to say, I didn't see, I didn't hear them say anything right. that they found in the house. So opinion, let me understand. So they picked up Paul at the airport? Yeah, he was with Sean Diddy Combs. Mm -hmm. And he, oh, okay. he, was, it was, and he was carrying that little pouch that Rodney talked about then. Okay. He was, and he was a substance security arrested because he claimed it. Oh, so he's going to do a shine move. Okay. All right. So we have someone else who's volunteering to be a victim. I don't give a damn. Let him do time. Get them all off the streets. I'm done. Thank you, Felicia. I appreciate you. I think the problem that the staff had, and I'm coming to you, Julius, um, they seen more than we heard about. And they seen how all of those things that we did not hear about got cleaned up and went away. Not making any excuses, I'm putting information out there. So they became immune to the dysfunction and the dysfunction was their norm. So they seen bodies allegedly go away, disappear, and nobody ever came knocking on that door, uh, 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 pow pows are blazing and all that. 
So I think that this time it took a minute for the realization to be that it's really going to be this heavy, this deep. Because people in law enforcement allegedly have been there before and things were cleaned up. So now they're coming here and this is real. So nobody was quitting because they didn't quit the whole 10 years they saw Cassie getting beat down. They didn't quit when the other girlfriend that got the baby allegedly knocked out of her belly. Amen. They didn't quit when they seen people getting choked, hanging over balconies and all of that. Gene Dill is running the streets talking a whole lot of mess, but he worked for uh, uh, Diddy for decades. So it's like people now want to act like they're so removed from it. What's the other name? Roger Bonds. He in the streets now talking all this nonsense, but you didn't work for Diddy for a day. You worked for Diddy for years. You pride yourself running your own mouth like Keefe D. You pride yourself in, I was that guy, I was that dude. When he would go to this town, this town, that town, I called ahead and made sure all was good and all was clear because Diddy was coming through. None of them quit. A lot of people are selling their soul to the devil. And as long as the check comes, they turn a blind eye to everything. We didn't get to this article yet in this part, but this Ava that he adopted, son ain't right with that. And the house staff and everybody else, they didn't quit when the house staff told them, you got to walk around a pouch with a pouch with street prescriptions. And everybody, when I come to you, please watch your words. I've been getting some deans. Don't put two wrong words in the chat and don't say the wrong words out of your mouth. But they walked around with the pouch with all the legal su substances and was prepared to give it to Diddy at any given time. And listen, not because I'm a genius, not because I'm psychic, because I can put one and one equals two. When you got that many substances going on at all of these parties, you cannot tell me that there's no way nobody ever had an overdose in that house. I feel like it's, it's, it's impossible. So they watch bodies get carried out. That unfortunate toxic environment became their norm and i don't i know i want everybody say how you feel feel how you feel and it's okay because you know i i'll be over here in my box i'm okay with that but i really feel like it's so messed up i get his kids are grown now but it's so messed up they grew in that toxic environment I feel the same way about Bobby Christina. Before she was ever able to see right, left, wrong, right, whatever the case may be, she knew how to probably, this is respectfully, smoke crack, sniff cocaine, I, and I said the wrong word, cocoa, and drank alcohol. So, so, so she's, she, what chance does she have? And she didn't just see it from one parent. She saw it from her mommy and her daddy. Two of the kids, Bobby and Christina, and then Bobby Brown Jr., they both left this world because of substances. Children don't do as you say, they do as you do. You're a smoker's a good chance your kid might be going around here puffing. 
you a cursor, you curse up and down in your house, it's a good chance that your kid is out there saying M, F, B, T, that, 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 and the other. You're a product of your environment. They say the apple don't fall too far from the tree. He was doing this stuff in his own home. Where was the kids? My screen shifted a little bit. I'm going to get to everybody. Dr. Love. Okay. Oh, this is, um, how could you say, very hard to process because for me, I'll say that. For, um, and I say that because I, I feel, I have a feeling like, mm, how can I put it? Okay. I just don't feel like nothing's going to happen to him. Um, and I'm not meaning nothing like they're going to play the court game. They're going to play all the games that need to be played. But I feel like he know too much, have too much for them to really come after him. I feel like it's too many videos. It's, it's too much of something, um, with this. And, and that's just my feeling right now. Um, I can't say my feeling will change as time goes on. Um, and I say this also because he all of a sudden was going on vacation with those twins. Mm -mm. Somebody told him days before that this was going down. Days. N not yesterday. Not whenever, an uh, hour before, two hours before. Um, they told him, I feel like, few, a few days. So I feel like um, he he knows some things and knows some people. Um, so at this point, I just feel like it's going to be a backwards and forth court type game. Um, the same as if our ex-president plays, ain't seen a day in in the clack clacks, I don't know if we can say the word. Um, just to say, I just feel like this is about to be a court game, and I I don't see him um, really doing any time because they they have one already that they set a really good example with, and that was R. Kelly. Um, so I and I don't know if because he didn't have the money, but I feel like Diddy has the money to where they're saying that now he is. Um, selling all of his assets, you know, getting it ready for the lawyer. So I just feel like this is going to be um, a ping pong backwards and forth for a while. My feelings. I am. Thank you, Dr. Love. Um, I'll just throw that out there. They're piling up the people, the witnesses. They're piling up the people that's going to talk. This thing was partly a show to, to shake Diddy up because he's easily shaken. Because he's not stable. Because he's on a thousand allegedly uh, uh, street substances. He's not stable. And he can't take it. They said he was pacing at the airport. Tay Tay, you're up. I would say he need to turn himself in right there. Because if he don't, it's going to be go off. Probably what next week or the week before that too, and he and he don't turn himself in, and you know diva, I agree about you by the staff too. They know what's going on for decade when they work for him anyway. They know what's going on. If uh, I went for Alicia too, I would I would work for a man right there. I say I'll quit and I say deuces too. I, cause I ain't going to jail for you. No, no, no. Nope. I'll keep my, I'm going to work with somebody else. That's all. Thank you, Tay Tay. Yes, y'all hit that like button. Hit the like button. Katrina, you're up. Good evening, y'all. Um, I was just saying that he's been, like you said, he's been doing this stuff for decades, for decades. So with Gene Dillon and out here talking and saying all this stuff, do you think they're going to have them as accessories? Because they've seen it. 
And he just about said that he had uh, Biggie taken out, like it was a setup for Biggie. I don't, I don't understand. I know they're saying he got a lot of money, got a lot of power. Well, so did John Gotti, so did Al, uh, Al Capone, but they still got got. Just, I mean, these people are only going to let you go so far. Like they told Malcolm X, that's too much power for, for one man. They're going to get him, and hopefully he, the people that he hurt, that he caused all these, like Felicia said, they probably got on substance, had to go to rehab, or had to do something to get off of it. His artist looks a mess. Look at Black Rob. Look at uh, Craig Mack. Look at all the money he's made off of Biggie since Biggie passed away. I mean, he's ridiculous. He got all these artists. He made, he, he got their work. He, he is uh, partying off of their work. You know what I'm saying? He, yeah, he was the producer and all that type of stuff. But look at the artists. Look at Total. Look at, uh, what's the other ones? Uh, was it 112? And all of them, they left and went with uh, Jermaine Dupree. He's a monster. He's a walking deviant. And they need to get him. He's pacing. Yeah, he's pacing. And like I said, he probably knew. And then he probably told the other kids, y'all stay here so it won't look like uh, I was told that I was going to be hit today. So he probably told them to stay at that house so it would look like that he wasn't guilty about something. I don't trust nothing he do. But as we know, the wheel will turn and we'll see what happened to him. Because he's a rat on a, on a, uh, well, he's a hamster that's on the hamster wheel that's going round and round in circles. And hopefully this was come to an end very, very soon. That's all I got. Thank you, Katrina. Alexander, um, you are correct. You are correct. You are correct. Because he's been doing this and they've been doing about it. Because some of them been there partying with him. But once he sued Diego, uh, stuff got real. E, you're up. First, I have to come back and apologize to Tyrone Blackburn. I know I criticized his legal performance thus far, but in the current lawsuit, Tyrone and Lil Rod have amended uh that lawsuit and removed one of those defendants. I'm not sure if you talked about that already. Mm -hmm. Um that Ethiopia from Motown Records because Ethiopia has turned as a witness and will now be aiding the prosecution. So Tyrone is getting the job done. And I do believe, although that is a civil case, this will also feed into the criminal cases. And the only reason why I brought that up is because uh, you mentioned that they're trying to get all of their witnesses. So I just want you to know uh, that that long list of defendants, some of those defendants are, are turning over to the prosecution side. Uh -huh. Now, uh, I do want to start here and I want to read this statement because I think it was Dr. Love who went there with, I don't think that he's going to do time. And I, I want to lean that way and then double right back. So I want to read this statement from another high profile celebrity who had their home raided. Um, I quote, these are dark times for our nation as my beautiful home is currently under siege raided and occupied by a large group of FBI agents. After working and cooperating with the relevant government agencies, this unannounced raid on my home was not necessary or appropriate. They even broke into my safe, end quote. Now that man who made that statement was Donald Trump when Mar-a-Lago was raided two years ago. Um, typically following an FBI raid, indictments are sure to follow. Now, Trump has 91 felony counts, and I'm not making this political. I'm just drawing that comparison because Dr. Love got me thinking. Um, it's I, I see where Dr. Love is coming from because Trump is still out. And uh, it's not over for Diddy just yet, but the pattern here with the statements, because that's how you let this this package diva by um, that lawyer statement that Diddy's lawyer put out. And there's a pattern here. Diddy and Trump both refer to these raids as witch hunts. And these people and people like them expect special treatment because they have money and status. The FBI is not a maid service. They're coming in with white boxes and they're coming to get the evidence that they need for their case. These people do not have to let you know they're coming. Uh, that defeats the purpose of a raid. Surprise. Um, but 
when they spoke about the damage to the property, well, y'all have seen, you should have seen them coming. I'm just a regular woman. I work a regular job, nowhere near the kind of money that Diddy or Trump makes. And yet anytime someone walks up to my front door, my phone goes up. I get a notification. I can see it on the camera. And you want me to believe you live in a $40 million house in a gated million dollar community. And when the FBI and HSI came driving down the street and walking up to the front door, your son is in the back with his pants down and nobody knew the FBI was at the front door, not even three minutes in advance. Come on what, now. What kind of staff is running this estate? Who's watching Talk the now. camera? Where Talk is the security? Talk so, about it. So, Wait, yes. E, I'm going to let you finish, but hold on. Diva has nowhere near that money. True. I'm sitting in the nail salon and my phone goes ping because they left a package at my door. Yes. When my neighbor leaves yes. home, yes. it says person detected and my thing's going ping. He left his kids he didn't give a darn. And he saw on his phone all of that movement and whatever the case may be. And because it was on water and they're coming, you can have a higher level security because mines go to a certain footage outside my, my door. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. <laughs> That's why I'm saying this is some BS. You didn't give a darn about your kids, and everybody's saying, I get y'all. This is no disrespect to anybody. I get your own oh, spring break, this, that, 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 the other, blah, blah, blah. I'm telling you, I follow Diddy, and the whole family usually always goes on spring break. Christian Combs is by his side, the girlfriend is there, everybody. The last time they went, even Baby Love, her mother, and Young Miami were there. And like, but like Felicia said, let's pretend you didn't know. When they came for you, the first thing I'm be like, with well, my kid. And you had a whole entourage in the in a private jet. Nobody else phone you could have got to. I'm telling the car take me back to the house, cause I'm gonna go see about mine. Finish, finishy. I'm sorry. No, uh, just uh, one last thing. So I, I'm also feeling differently about, because yesterday I spoke of, and I had so much empathy for him leaving those kids, Justin and Christian. And I believe Royer is the one who brought up their age yesterday. Yes, Justin is 30. And I think Christian is 25 or something like that. Now, originally we saw those two being detained and my heart broke for them because again i'm looking at it from a mom's a, from a parent's perspective but what a difference the day makes because there are pictures online of christian and justin getting in their cars and leaving that estate and justin was getting in his luxury vehicle and driving off and he was smiling and laughing they have a steel shot that man is smiling underneath his cap and christian is being chauffeured off and he is in the back seat with his girlfriend these boys are their father's son and yes i i understand that you know you probably don't have a, a, much of a chance when you have a father like that but still my empathy level has shifted as it relates to these grown men. And now I don't have, I don't give a damn about his sons. When Ooh, you have- e, I want Stop. you to shift it back a little bit because what happened was they came back to the house to get their stuff. Well, still, they, they're they smiling though. And when you have somebody's daughter- I, I Go ahead, I'm sorry. Christian, you have, go ahead. No, you go. Christian Combs wasn't smiling. He looked sad. And, and listen to the thing. I mean, are you going to cry all night? I'm trying to here. Let me. Um, and then here's the thing. This. Oh, shoot. My computer's acting up. Okay. Let me share the screen. It's trying to come through. That's Christian. No, no, that's Justin, I mean. 
And that's Christian in the back. And that's the girlfriend. And that's the driver. And the driver looked like he got Mary Jane in his mouth. But that's a whole nother story for another day. But mm -hmm. I don't I don't think I, I think this is devastating for them. I don't. And, and you know what? Here's the here's the hard part for me. This is not you. E. This and again, it could have been nervous smiling. Here's the thing. I don't equate money with how I'm going to feel about you. Because they were born privileged, I'm not going to hold that against them. We got to stop saying just if you broke, there's a struggle. We're going to feel more sorry for you. They got money. They was born into it. Lucky them. I don't feel anything's wrong with that. I don't care you getting in your luck, your luxury car. There's plenty but of- That's not what I'm saying. Well, go ahead. Talk to me then. But let me read this. Diane, thank you for the super chat. My alarm detects my neighbor and even cars too close. Come on, Diane. Well, go ahead. E, I'm sorry. No. I'm not I'm I'm not penalizing them for having luxury vehicles. I'm I, my let me rephrase. Hold on, hold on again. Hold on again. Um um E. Girlfriend, I do what I want to do over here. If you don't like it, you got to go. Goodbye. Go ahead, E. <laughs> what <laughs> what I'm saying is is that um because from the documents that we we read backstage and the public has access to it because the case the, the documents are available it, either Diddy or Justin did something to that man in that bathroom and when I say that they are their father's son they have a lot of him in them and so when I think about my empathy now you haven't just been watching your father do all of these things and you haven't participated. My mind goes to, you call yourself King Combs. You're the next heir to the throne. I, his, his hands are not clean, if you ask me. And he's he's 25, I think. And so my empathy has shifted from them completely. And when I see that girl in the backseat, the picture you just showed that girlfriend, that's who my empathy goes for. That's somebody's daughter right there. My empathy goes to somebody's mother and father working in this house and they're in danger because they, they have they have chosen to work for you and they cook your meals. They dust and vacuum your rooms. They do your landscaping. They're managing your home and jeopardizing their freedom potentially. Previously, we already heard how he was severely underpaying his former chef because we talked about that here too. Long hours, underpaying, and just fair wage practice violations from LA to New York to Miami. So that's who I feel sorry for, the hourly staff. Not these entitled and arrogant 25 and 30 year olds men. Like Katrina said, when I saw them leaving, and I get what you're saying, Diva, Christian, maybe he does appear devastated only because the walls are closing in a little bit. Your daddy is not as untouchable as he led you to believe, or you're not able to get out of these situations so easily as you had previously. But the only son who I will just, uh, my empathy remains high for is Quincy. Because when I'm looking at Quincy and all of this stuff going on, Quincy still has the covering of his mother watching over him. And as long as he stays pure to what is righteous, Kim will keep him and Quincy will keep his sisters. For me, it's the lost cause for Christian and Justin. They're not even on my radar right now. Ooh. Clink, clink. <laughs> Clankety clank. Clink, clink. You know what's sad to me? In one moment, we know we say love and protect, but it's like, oh, with them, whatever. When when it was Marcus Jordan, whose father is Michael Jordan, and we say that J Michael Jordan didn't pour into him so he could become all he could be, we got sympathy, empathy, or whatever. But these kids were like, whatever. They're deviant. They are who they are. It is what it is. Michael didn't you commit have, no crimes. But, but let me say this, though. You have Christian and the twins and Quincy, whose mother is gone. Their mother is gone. All they have is their father. 
They've been looking up to their father their whole life. They've been doing everything with their dad. And yeah, I I'm sure there are parents whose children get a hold of pow pals and sometimes unalive themselves or their siblings. You got this little Rodney who tells us that these people are coming in and out of this house all day long. You don't think they saw this their whole life and had to process it? And so now we're saying like, oh, whatever. I don't know. It breaks my heart. I don't, I don't, I feel for them. Whether they 30, 40, whatever. Because they grew up and this is what they know. And when you have a man that there's other grown men that work for him that are scared and you think the kids may not be, but you feel sorry for a housekeeper who hasn't got paid and stayed there for years. Yes. I'm telling you right now, if I don't get my check, if I'm supposed to get my check in two weeks and I don't get it, I'm out. I don't care if you did it. I don't care if you the Obamas. If you don't run me my money, I'm good. I got to go get me another job, whether it's at Target or whatever. But see, the thing is, people sell their soul to the devil and then they want a refund. They want everybody to feel sorry for them. You fix this for me. I messed up, but you fixed this for me. Little Rodney, he came back. And I'm not saying, oh, let's neglect what he did. He came back and came back and came back. But yet he said the whole time he wasn't paid. Who else would little Rodney work for for a whole year and not get paid? If I told him to come over here and do music for my channel, he probably wouldn't even start the project until I gave him some type of down payment. But because it's Diddy, you sat there and did it? All right. Um, Wayne, you're up. Uh, well, D, what you were saying about that, I was. I saw an article. He was saying the reason, you know, uh, he said because on one day, Diddy be willing to give you, going to give you the world, going to give you this and fly you with this. And the next day, he's ready to want to take your life or tell you that his bodyguard makes people disappear. And so you he stay, was, and you stay, uh, and you stay, and you keep coming back a whole year. The, well, you know, when you're not in that position, diva, and somebody's threatening you, or I don't know. But anyway, this part where I was going to say, Diddy reminds me of the kind of guy that maybe uh, somebody's attacking the family, and he uses, and they, you know, pow powing, and they use one of the kids as a shield. That's how low I think he would go. Good gosh. I, I think he would. Not only that, this is my prediction. I don't think he's going to be around a long time. One, because if he runs his mouth and gets all these other people, get this net of all these other predators, I don't think they're going to let that happen, personally. Okay, second... He's too weak. If he did have to go to the to jail, I don't think he I don't he can't I don't think he was able to see himself in jail. And I think possibly it could be some self-infliction. I'm just saying. Okay. He's garbage. The people in his house, like somebody said, they become immune to it. Uh you remember the movie Bad Boys? And when the uh when they were at this place where they were trying to, they were do the extermination or something like that. Anyway, I guess the man was like the Godfather, and one of his one of his little his his uh, workers saw his daughter. His little daughter came down. He laughed, huh? Because she's a little chunky girl. He said, "You laughing at my daughter?" Uh, no, Johnny pow, pow. Right. The mama looked over. She's up on the balcony. Oh, what happened? What? Oh, he he died. Oh. Send flowers to the family for me. Okay, that kind of, you know, so used to it, they just, like you said, they're immune to it. 
So, but if he, if he starts talking and, you know, think he's going to take people down with him, if Diddy is as powerful and all these people that people say he know, he got all these connections, he got info, and he got info that either if you go in, you're going to shut up. If you start talking, he won't even make to sell. That's just my thoughts. Oh, thank you. And Wayne. if he did, there'd be tears of joy. You know, he mentioned Trump. Trump don't look like Diddy. Y'all know I don't do politics over here, but Trump don't look like Diddy. I said I was saying the same thing when he said that Diva. I didn't mean to cut you off. I was I was saying that that ain't you know that ain't Diddy. No, and then in addition to that, the four hundred million whatever crazy whatever they said he had to give the other day, and that day came and passed, and he's still walking free. Um, they cut it. I want to say by less than half. Right, they cut it to one hundred and seventy something, and one seventy five. One seventy five. Then they told him. He told them, "Give me, give me a, a couple, whatever, 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 whatever." Listen, all I can say is that this is a hot mess. This is sad. Julius, did I come to you? No. Go ahead. You're up. Um, I do feel bad for King and Justin. They didn't ask to be made. Diddy has always been delusional, narcissistic, and disgusting. Um, and we gonna and we gonna find out soon about this certain person that we all know and we rap to some of his songs. Justice for Biggie, hashtag. Because it's already in the process for Tupac. Um, it's only a matter of time. He's been running for so long. Now he can't hide. And he's been doing a whole lot of wrong. It's about to come out. It's about to come out big time. And we're gonna we're gonna know all the dirt. Even though we probably know the general we, we bought the the government knows a whole lot for for homeland security, not just the homeland security. Yeah. We gonna we're gonna be hearing about an indictment pretty soon. Yeah, the, the, here's the thing. Most of their connections are their connections because it because it's connected to the, the dollar bill. Money is king, right? So R. Kelly was getting away with a lot because he paid off a lot of people. And as soon as the money ran out, they started running their mouth. They was talking because he had no more money to give, no more money to pay anybody. He couldn't continue to pay. And they started to run their mouth. Diddy had his connections that he had because he had the money to give around and he had the money to pay for it. And now that's not going to happen uh, too much longer because he doesn't have all of those brand deals that he had before. I think 30 of them or something like that. It was an astronomical, really high number that cut him off after he paid off Cassie. They was, they was dropping him in the droves. They was just cutting him off, cutting him off, cutting him off, cutting him off, cutting him off. And so now to know that he sold his um, shares in revolt, that's a whole situation right there, right? He's not going to run, in my opinion. He's not going to run. He's lawyered up. Um, he's talking to the lawyers. Um, I do believe that if there was anything to be seen or had, if he got rid of it way before then. And when I say tip off, I'm not saying like Homeland Security and himself calling and said, we coming. They didn't do that. But did he get word from someone that knew that they were coming? I believe that wholeheartedly. Wholeheartedly. And he knew ahead of time to start getting rid of that stuff. 
And if he was smart and somebody talked to him, which I don't believe he doesn't have to be that smart. I think he got people that smart enough around him that told him, do what you got to do. Right. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that stuff because little Ronnie told a lot. He told a lot. He told a lot of the business had that had nothing to really do with him not getting paid and needing his money. But he felt like, you know, whoever, if you put all this in there, we're going to shake him down. He had pictures. He had the, what I'm going to call the Olivia Pope picture in there. That one guy that said, if anything happened in this state or that state, you call him. He talked about the men in black that come sell the, the weapons and so forth and so on. So they was coming there looking for those weapons. The weapons was gone, in my opinion. He showed pictures. And I mean, the picture that was shown of the substances, that was a lot. Just the pictures he showed us. And I'm sure he didn't have everything. And to be on that amount of substances is insane. I don't know how that man is still walking around. But the minute... He, his body begins to detox off of it, it's going to be problematic. Can I say one thing? Of course you can. Um, I still feel, I know that he wanted to fight these cases. Mm -hmm. and he didn't want to do any more payouts. Mm -hmm. However, before, because I'm sure Tyrone reached out to Diddy, or in my mind, he reached out and stated their demands and tried to see if they could settle. I'm hoping, or in my mind, I like, I like to think that happened. But the fact that you allowed this to go this far and get all of this information out to the public, I feel like it's a snowball effect. Now, after Cassie, it's no way to stop people from coming forward. But to me, this is just too grave to keep on fighting. Uh, you need to make this disappear and go away quickly because you need to focus on your criminal case that is pending. Was it just the Homeland Security or was it feds too? No, I didn't I didn't read anything about the feds. I read Homeland Security. Felicia, it seemed like okay. you got to do something before I throw in this um Ava story. Uh thank you for that. Uh if I may, I'd like to address some folks in the chat. Uh-huh. And particularly the young sisters that I have such respect for and that I care about. Uh, one of the things that I focus on is to remain consistent. And yes, I believe all children ought to be loved and protected, even when they become of legal age. However, I expect that when your child becomes an adult and they're a full adult, that they have made choices, knowing choices, and they make decisions, knowing decisions. And even if they don't fully understand, the media is helping you to understand. So someone says, well, yeah, there was all this empathy for Cassie. Anyone who has been on Diva's show for the past five months have heard me say that Cassie needed to be held accountable. I said her dear friend, Carrie Morgan, and I've said it many times, took a hanger to the head from her so-called boyfriend and Cassie joined in and did damage herself to the point where Carrie was had to settle with both Mr. Combs and Miss Ventura. When I think about the juxtaposition of a 17 year old girl, a 15 year old boy being given substances being misled, saying, oh, you want a career in the industry. We're going to this uh, listening party. We're going to a promo party. And they're all excited. They're very young. We've all been very young. And you go. And the next thing you know, you are being abused, essayed physically, mentally. Mm -mm. No, I don't. Mm -mm. When I think about the boyfriend, the one, what's his name, Christian, going out and soliciting young women for his father's parties. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. No, I don't care. If this is what it takes for them to end, to go get some counseling, 
to learn right from wrong, then let it be. They didn't have to spend time in a, in a jail cell. They didn't get charged. This is a huge wake up call for those men. No, mm -mm. no empathy here. And I'm gonna sleep real good tonight because <laughs> I'm thinking about all the children, all the young people who've been abused, taken advantage of, misled by these perpetrators, these predators. They're gonna come forward. We had an opportunity to look at a few young men about a month ago who were part of this ex-worker group. Some didn't even wanna listen to them. Some didn't wanna look in their faces because they didn't look like what we would want them to look like. But what I saw were young boys who had been abused and taken advantage of, disrespected and demeaned, all for someone else's pleasure. So nope, not tonight. And you think I'm being a mammy? God bless me. God bless this mammy right here because I'm going to protect the kids that nobody's talking about. The ones who get caught up in this entertainment industry the excitement of being in a studio. Go ahead, read those uh, lawsuits. First thing that happens is they get taken to the studio. And after that, they're abused. Thank I'm you. Going to remain consistent. I'm Thank going to remain you. consistent. Mm -mm. They're predators. Thank you, Saskia. I appreciate you. I agree. Um, so, so I want to throw this out there before I roll into the story about this Ava, the young Ava here that um, is the resurface, so to speak. Um, I want to say this. This is a lot going on. These, um, these stories can lead into a lot of different conversations, but it starts at home. And this is just Diva's thought process, Diva talking. It starts at home. You have Usher who went to a Diddy camp when he was young. And they said things happened. You have Justin Bieber that went to a Diddy camp when he was young. And they said things happened. So your protection when you from birth should be your parents. And when my parent is the alleged predator, where do I stand? Where is my moral compass? Do I have one? If I grow up and in my home for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, we eat Cheerios. And I don't really go outside my home that much. And then I go somewhere else and I'm like, y'all don't eat Cheerios for dinner? And they're like, you eat Cheerios for dinner? You are a product of your environment. And I get it, they're older. And I get it, they should know. But they lived in a bubble that is unlike any other for people that don't have that level of money. And what they may see as the norm is definitely different than what I would see as the norm. Their norm is a heck of different. Their norm is housekeepers, cooks, drivers, and all kinds of other stuff. And unfortunately, probably in their home, the norm was substances, alcohol, parties, all day, every day long. Naked girls, naked guys. They said Diddy walks around with no clothes on. So if he's always on something, I can't picture him being able to turn off and on his two different worlds. 
when I'm having my parties, I'm walking around with no clothes on, touching, grabbing, doing all kinds of stuff to people. But when my kids are here, I, I'm sober enough to keep my clothes on, not touch, pluck, pick this, that, and the other. It's a lot. And I'm going to move into this Ava story. Um, there is a video, and y'all can Google it. I can't show the video because the videos, all the ones I was able to pull up, they belong to someone on YouTube, and I will get dinged for showing it. But a video of Sean Diddy Combs with adopted daughter Ava Baroni resurfaces after the feds raids his home. So a video of Sean Diddy Combs introducing his adopted daughter, Ava Baroni, has resurfaced a day after two of his homes were raided for ST. In a clip from 2020 posted on TikTok Tuesday, the Bad Boy Records founder is seen asking Baroni to introduce herself to his Instagram followers during a live session. My name is Ava. I'm a Scorpio. The team began before Combs interrupted her and told her to say her last name. And then she said it is Ava Combs Baroni. The billionaire hip hop mogul 54 then claimed that he had adopted the white child. She is on the Indian next to the twins. The one in the um, white ballerina dress, not the one in the red dress. So, um, that's her um, older on her own Instagram, okay? Um, she, I, I want to tell you, I want you to tell them the story of how I adopted you, but you still have beautiful parents, that, but you also, my, you're, you're my child also, he said, as several other men um, made appearances in the background of the video. So whoever wrote that said several other men, but if you go see the video, there's several other men are Diddy's kids. OK, so it's not as sinister as some of these people made it to be. Quincy is in the video. It looked like um, King, which is Christian, is in the video. And it also looks like Justin is in the video. So it's not just random men. So Baroni then jokingly explained how she was on the streets before Papa Combs decided that he was going to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up and said to, said to come inside and stay with his kids, she shared, adding that she and the rapper's twin daughters, Jesse and Delia, are basically sisters. While Combs admitted Baroni's recollection of events was a little bit borderline suspect, he claimed he adopted her like Madonna and other celebrities adopted their children. That was her, that's how long this girl has been in the Combs circle. She's very young there and so are the twins and that is her in the middle. That is them again. That's her and the twins. Okay. I adopted you because I felt you can enjoy also having a black parent to take care of you and help you out. He continued adding that he got permission from the young girl's mother. Y'all hear that? What mother would give Johnny next door permission to adopt their daughter. They wouldn't. It's something about money that people let all their morals go in the trash. Combs concluded the clip by clarifying that her name is Ava Baroni Combs before kissing her on the cheek. Amid Monday's raid of his homes due to ST investigation, fans took to the comment section of the video to question her whereabouts now. They said, where is she? One fan wrote. Another one wrote, why are all the men in this video so creepy? Return that child. But like I told you, go see the video. The men are his sons. That's another picture of her. The public is speculating if this underage minor named Ava was allegedly one of his ST victims. I'm not going to go through the rest because the rest just repeats stuff we already know. Um, it's insane. And all you have to do is, um, is, um, say like, go and say like, where, like you can Google video Ava and Diddy and it will come up and you'll be able to see it. Leo, your thoughts? Did I lose everybody? 
still. No, I'm here. here. Okay. No, I'm still here. Okay. In my opinion, let me come to you. Maybe Leo is um needs a minute. Um, first of all, I think it is sickening um that he has a, another child that we know nothing about. We don't know he had no legal papers on her. Um I think it's sickening. And I think for us to know that he fantasizes and acquires younger ladies to take advantage of this is even more disgusting and alarming. Um, I need somebody to be checking those records to see who these parents are that initially gave their child away like this because then they should be locked up under the jail cell that he should be locked up under soon. Um, I just think everything about Diddy is disgusting. And the more we hear about his case, the more disgusted I am. And to know that there are other people that are just as disgusting as he is, I want all of them up under the jail cell. And I know that's going to be a hard battle to fight, but I feel like if we can get this one and we can start working on building that bridge to tear the rest of them down, then we're a better place without them because these are some disgusting, sick, some of, you know what, to be called men to abuse our young children. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you so much. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm, what do, let me see if I can play a little bit of it. Hold on one sec. I'm coming to you, Felicia, one second. I might be able to get like 30 seconds in. We'll see what the 30 seconds is. Yeah, yeah, everyone introduce yourself. My name's Ava. I'm a Scorpio. No, no, no. What's your last name? Yeah, Ava Combs. What's your other last name? Ava Barone. Ava Barone Combs? Yes, it's, it's breaking news. Diddy adopted a white child. <laughs> Like I said, Google the video. I can't show the whole thing. The video belongs to someone it's else. He calls her a white kid. The whole thing is disgusting. The whole thing is disgusting. But where's her parents? Who allows this? Felicia, you're up. Again, Mr. Combs looks totally intoxicated in that clip doesn't even look aware, present, doesn't even acknowledge that that's a child. Just more entertainment for him. I'm disgusted, my opinion is I'm disgusted and I want him off the streets. I want him criminally charged. I want him gone. And yeah, someone asked, well, did he, did he S.O. her? Did he say, yeah, I think he did. Yeah, she's probably been streamlined across the world. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah. I'm done. Dr. Love? Ooh, well, are we, are we saying this child is missing now? She's not missing. People are saying that, but she did shut down her Instagram. She, okay. she made it private. Oh, okay. Okay. She um, didn't show that whole TikTok. She mm, did. Mm, okay. Nope. She actually posted eight hours ago. Okay. Well, yeah. Well, you know the kids love TikTok. Um, I was gonna say, most likely, whoever her mother is, she's probably she's most likely on some type of substance or something. Something went wrong in her life for, um, to me for for this to happen. I, I bet you if we dig deep, we could figure out, you know, um, kind of what went on there. But um, I feel sorry for her because um, it seemed like she is well conditioned. Um, as we know, a child can be well conditioned. And um, that's pretty much it. I really feel like she's just well conditioned. Um, I think it'll take a lot to get her to speak. It's, it will take a lot. So, yeah. That's my opinion. All right. I appreciate you. Um, one minute, Tay Tay. I am coming to you. Hmm. 
I pray a little bit more. I want you to tell them the story about how I adopted you. But you still have beautiful parents that mature my child also. Please, please tell the story. So, I was <laughs> on the streets. Yeah. And then Papa Coombs decided that he would like to be a caring man. So then he saw me and decided to pick me up. And said to come inside and play with the kids. Yeah. Tay Tay, you're out. How and who and why, when uh, you met this girl, and why you adopted, and you told her on this video that um, her name is Ava Combs. Where's her parents? Where's the village? Why you sold your kid to this man right here? Uh, this is disgusting right here. This is so disgusting. I went Felicia, MIP, and Dr. Little right here. This is so, this baby gonna be traumatized with this right here. And she gonna need a therapy for this a lot of therapy and this is unbelievable right here this is a, that's all i gotta say to you yeah well you know what bianca unfortunately everything that goes on in that house home is is their norm is their norm everything that goes on in that household is their norm you see quincy is there christian combs is there justin is there it's a mess they all have and, and you know melissa <laughs> melissa you done said a word he takes people kids come on you you know what wake me up you are correct quincy from albie shore and allegedly justin from that guy wolf thanks for waking me up i forgot Katrina, you're up. And before you go, Katrina, give me one second. I might be in a... Where am I at? I'm sorry. Am I who am I at now? Katrina. Go ahead, Katrina. First of all, he said he said that he found her on the street. Okay, all the kids is on the street. Why he picked you? Did your mom sell you for drugs or something? So why was you picked? It's more than you on the streets. And the second thing is. Why are you putting her out there like that? And where was she yesterday when everybody else was on the plane? Is he the girl still with him? And then did you give her back to the parents? Where's she at now? This man is crazy. And he's doing all those drugs because he got so many demons he can't sleep. That's why he's taking those drugs because his soul is not resting. He's ridiculous. He's pathetic. And I can't believe he even put that out there. He adopted a white child just like Madonna. Man, is you insane? This man is totally sick. He's really, really sick. And they don't tell him what he's doing with this girl. Because that's just, that's just pretty strange. I'm just saying, of all people on the streets, you pick this one. What's the deal? Did you pay your mom? Did you pay the mom? Something ain't right with that. And I'm glad to pay. I mean, Homeland Security is looking into that. Because that's just, that's some weird mess right there. All the people's on the um on the streets and what's up? You pick up this white girl. Come on, be for real. You got a motive. You don't do nothing without having a motive. If nothing is gonna benefit you, you're not finna do it. So you did it for a reason. That's all I got. Thank you, Katrina. I appreciate you. Um, E, you're up. Yeah. 
something is not right. Um, my first thought was, where did this Italian girl come from? And what is the obsession with young girls all of a sudden? The way he photographs those twins and the other half sister, and now this little Italian girl. Diva, I hear you when you say the other men in the video are Diddy's sons. Yes, I can see that. But the deal is, his older sons are not Ava's brothers. All of those men surrounding this girl, cheering her on for telling this story of how she was on the streets and how she came to be in his custody, to me, that was highly inappropriate. There is no love in the message, no compassion, no gentleness. We're talking about a bunch of grown, tall men, big men, over just crowding this young girl, uh, the optics of it, it did not look right. And I agree with Felicia. He did look intoxicated, especially on that last video you played. He was in no condition to be recording anything and especially coercing this young girl to be recording and delivering a message uh, to the masses. Mm -mm. Um, and then he said um, the parents gave him permission to adopt her. And he says her parents are so great. If the parents are so great, then where the hell are they? Why aren't they raising her? You know, and I have to say that uh, in that last clip you showed, I mean, not the last one, the first one. And he said, I adopted you because I thought you would benefit from being raised by a black parent. That line creeped me the hell out. What is that supposed to mean? Uh, immediately, what played in my mind is when it was said that Diddy was in the studio with Daddy Kane, and he said he would get them addicted to D-R-U-G-S and P-I-M-P -P them out. And this is exactly what that video looked like to me. It was as if he was advertising in cold words because we know he likes to streamline things and, you know, underground. Um and it just scream, I have this new product, hit me in the DMs. This is why I said before, zero empathy for those older boys. With the exception of Quincy, I'm still willing to, to, to ride with them a little bit. Because even if Diddy is intoxicated and he knows not what he is doing and I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt, these boys know better. And so I, it would have made more sense you have three other daughters. Well, four. Where were those other three girls? Why is it nothing but boys in this video? Where was Delilah? Where was Jesse? Where was Chance? This, something isn't right. And it's creepy. So let me say this. It's funny you want to give the other boys all of this grace and mercy, but it looked like Quincy started the video. I agree. That's why I say I'm still willing to ride with him, but not the other two. Mm -mm. I'm not changing on that. Okay. So he starts the video. You're going to cut him some slack. But the I'm other I'm still one, willing. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. Uh, Wayne, you're up. Well, <clears throat> you know, they say you train a child. Uh, what's the, how you train a child something up, and when they In grow up, they won't get part. In right. a way he should go. Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> and how do you train them when they that young? It's sad. I felt chills when he said uh, he adopted a white girl. It's almost like, hey, y'all, I just bought me a nice, brand new white German Shepherd. Like it was property. And when I agree with E when he said it's almost like it's advertisement. And that cheer in the background from them clapping, I think they was clapping because she read the cue cards right. Oh, now you that notice makes how sense. she was reading? It, it mm -hmm. wasn't reading, you know, it, they said, oh, she was shy. No, I think they was clapping. Oh, you got it right. You read it right. This is a bunch of B. Ain't no grown man want to raise somebody else's child. And they're good parents. It just don't make sense. Their parents are good. But, you know, he probably offered them a whole bunch of money and told them that she's going to have the best education in all this BS. And <clears throat> I'd really like to know 
Where they nobody said nothing about where that little girl is at. And I just hope and pray that it's just nothing foul, you know, nothing foul. So that's it. Thank you. Um, Julius, you're up. Um, that was too rehearsed to me. Too rehearsed. And she, he was like, go ahead, say it. Tell, say, say what your last name is. Say it. And the girl was like, she didn't want to say Combs at first because she, she knows she's not his child. And the reason why I also say I'm giving Quincy grace, because if we go back and watch the video, notice how he's standing in like bodyguard stance, making sure nothing happens to her. I picked up on that. While Diddy was all like, we we know, but Quincy was like, and just like making sure nothing goes wrong. I can see that because he does that with the twins. You, you picking up what I'm throwing down? I'm picking it up. Because he's just like, okay, well, he ain't doing nothing right now. Let me just. Relax my posture, and when she and when he's and when she said her full name, she he's like, okay, so I'm gonna tone it down a bit. But he was standing guard, like, don't you dare do anything to her. I'm telling you, if anything, if anybody knows what Diddy has done, it's Quincy. And we need to pray for his protection. I'm telling you. So we going to pray for one and not all. That's I'm it. praying for all of them. Because there's no telling what that narcissistic monster degraded them to. There's no telling what they have seen. I don't, I don't want to speculate, but I'm just going off of his body language to me. Thank you, Julius. Um, Sas K, thank you. Run the streets, Sas K. Run the streets. Thank you. I appreciate you. Put a time out. I, I, listen, I, I will, I will, I will say this that. Um, they all lived in that home. I can't, I can't imagine that they all haven't seen something. And to say that Quincy knows a lot, all those kids know, know a lot. And, and, and they run thick as these with Diddy. It's their dad. And we know Justin, unfortunately, because out of his own mother's mouth, out of Justin's own mother's mouth, when that DUI happened, she lost her mind. And she was ready to tell it all at that moment because she didn't want her son to go to jail and she didn't want her son to go down. And when I thought about it, when I was talking to my girlfriend about it, I said to myself, you know what? His walls was breaking down then. Because how did Justin even get that DUI as much connections as did he had? So when I was talking to her, I said, now that I'm thinking back, the walls was breaking down there. Because Rodney said it in Miami. So I forgot, where did, where did Justin get this DUI? I want to say, I would have to go back to the actual um lawsuit but i just know he said if you're ever in miami you have a problem you're ever in cali you have a problem you call him I think his name was fahim right something but his picture was in the lawsuit 
So how did Justin even get that DUI? So that's interesting to me. There's a lot going on with this case. I had a lot more pieces I want to talk about, but actually it got to be another part with Diddy. I'm diddied out. I'm diddied out. Um, yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah, Misa, she went off. She was pissed and she was ready to talk. There are a lot of individuals that was ready to talk. Some of them every now and then did come out and say a little stuff about Diddy. But every time somebody speaks about Diddy, at least in the past, um, those people got dealt with, allegedly. And they he got, got the DUI. Huh? He got the DUI in California. Mm, and that's where they have pulled. So that's interesting. I got to dig a little more with that. I don't know how he even got it when this the cleanup guy does everything. So how did Justin get this DUI? How did he get it? So I feel like Diddy's, you know, his pool has been falling apart a little bit. And I think because even for some of the people that are backing him, he goes too far. How many bodies allegedly do you want us to cover? How much are you? you just getting out of control now. He's a definite can't stop, won't stop. Let me share your screen. Anybody want to add anything before I show the feel good story? Everybody's good. So this month on Netflix, I don't know how long it's going to be on there. And I got to sit down and watch it again in one whole piece because I've been watching it in pieces and then falling asleep and then had to start a certain spot again. But the Shirley Chisholm story, um, really good story. Oh, my God. Inspiring. Um, Regina King, she's always an amazing, amazing actress, but did an amazing job. I felt like she was Shirley Chisholm. Um, Trailblazer. And what's hurtful and interesting to me is when we go in our history to find inspiring people Backstage is full, y'all. I know somebody's trying to get in, and I'm about to close out, but backstage is full. Um, when I look, we look in history and we find the people who really put in the work and did the work and who are going to make a historical mark in the world, it's a shame we have to go so far back. You know, I forgot who it was, and they and they jumped all on her back. And um, they, they said pretty much that they hope all the bad things that, um, uh, what is his name did? What is his name? Bill Cosby, that all the bad things he did doesn't outweigh the good. Well, unfortunately, too bad life doesn't work like that. Um, too bad life doesn't work like that. You know, you can, when you, when you look like me, you can do 20,000 bad things. Um, but then you do, I mean, you could do 20,000 good things and then you do one bad thing and it's a wrap. So if you get an opportunity, you should watch the um, Netflix movie on Shirley Chisholm. Like I said, it's really, really good. And so though, although I missed, February Black History Month. Here we have it. Here's my feel good story, y'all. Lost more than 50 years after Shirley Chisholm became the first black woman to run for president, local and state leaders, even Vice President Kamala Harris, credit her for paving the way for all to enter politics. And this Black History Month, CBS 2's Lisa Rosner shows us how the Brooklyn native's legacy is still making a difference. From growing up on this tree-lined street on Prospect Avenue in Crown Heights to the halls of Congress, the late Congresswoman Shirley Chisholm set out to make a change. She was feisty, direct, but also had a good sense of humor. NAACP New York Conference President Dr. Hazel Dukes remembers being with Chisholm in January 1972. Shirley Chisholm for women set the stage that opened the door that people had to look and respect women in a different light, that this was not just for male clubs. I stand before you today 
as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. I stand here now without endorsement from many big name politicians or celebrities. She didn't ask for permission to run or donations, hence her campaign slogan, unbought and unbossed. What was her attitude when she lost? Her attitude, she did lose. She began a process. Brooklyn College professor Dr. Zinga Fraser explains. Chisholm still is the first person who gets to the convention. We have yet to have a woman get all the way to the convention. She says, I am going to insert another discussion around policies that the men around the table would not acknowledge. Chisholm is talking about LGBTQ rights. Chisholm is talking about the environment. She's talking about a woman's right to choose. Chisholm was known for saying, if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. Her political career started in 1964 as a state assemblywoman. She ran for Congress without the support of party leadership and won anyway, making her the first African-American female representative. Before all that, the Brooklyn College and Columbia alum was in early childhood education. I used to ask, like, how can we do more? I wanted a um, community center. Proudly wearing a Chisholm pin, current Assemblywoman Monique Chandler-Waterman says her road from running a daycare to Albany was made possible by Chisholm. Soon, a new community center bearing Chisholm's name will go in East Flatbush. Her family is from Barbados, like Chisholm, who spent some of her childhood there. It makes me feel that, you know, you could do anything. And I like to think her energy and what she embodies is instilled in all of us. In recent years, black women have run for Congress in record numbers. The hope is that soon a monument dedicated to Chisholm as well as a Netflix movie will inspire millions more people. I'm paving the road for a lot of other people looking like me to get elected. Shirley, starring actress Regina King, will chronicle her 1972 presidential run. Frazier was a historical consultant on the film. A lot of the work that she was doing then and doing now is really about changing the political discourse and making it be representative of all people. Before she died in 2005, Chisholm said she wanted to be remembered as a catalyst of change. And in 2024, the tide keeps rolling. In Crown Heights, Lisa Rosner, CBS 2 News. Okay, listen guys, thanks for being here. I appreciate y'all. It was our Diddy the Dark Side conversation. If you didn't hit the like button coming in, please hit the like button going out. Good night and goodbye everybody and I'll see y'all next time. Thanks for watching. Do not cheat the dude always strike that.